Uh, welcome to this afternoon uh, masterclass on um, uh, some trends which I'll be sharing with you, especially for um, uh, the mega trends of jobs, the future of jobs. Okay, so what are some of the in-demand skills? I'm sure everybody is very excited to know what they are, right? Okay, let me share my uh, notes with you. Um, if you have ever attended any of my uh, workshops or seminars or my class, can you press 1, type 1, so at least I know. If you have ever attended any of my classes or workshops, public workshops, I want to see uh, like how many people actually. Well, so I got a fan club here. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. I have a fan club. All right. Okay. Okay, all right. Yeah, so for those of you who have pressed one, can you like maybe uh, type like where you have seen me or uh, which kind of workshops or classes you have attended? Because I do many classes in Singapore. So uh, I mean a lot of people. So maybe, okay, the SSG, all right. I also teach the okay, the MBA, very good. Okay, HLBP, yeah, excellent. Okay, um, to all of you, to all the uh, regulars, okay, my fan club, welcome, good afternoon to you. Okay, all right. I'm so sorry, I can't share uh, okay, my, my notes here, but uh, I'll have this available after today's uh, uh, seminar, okay? All right, if anything, maybe you can just take a screenshot. Right. So let's let's begin since we only have an hour. Um, today today I'll be talking about some in-demand skills for the emerging work, workforce. Uh, can you all see my slides? Can, can uh? All right. Uh, some a bit of introduction about myself. I made a career transition. Um, before being a a psychologist, I was actually in something very very different. I was um, a symphony orchestra conductor. Are you sure, are you all surprised? I was I'm, I'm a music scholar. Immediately after national service, I went to Massachusetts, Boston. I was the first Singaporean to conduct the Boston Youth Symphony Orchestra. Yes, and the, the composer of Star Wars, Sir John Williams, was my mentor. Okay, so and um, I was in music for about close to fifteen years. Okay, so I spent a lot of time in America. I came back, made a career switch to become a clinical psychologist. <laughs> Would you believe it? From a music conductor to a mu uh, to a clinical psychologist. Then, um, then I became a consultant. So if you notice, all my career starts with CCC. Okay, so I'm very familiar with all these uh, in-demand skills because it's like, what kind of skills did I bring over? I'm sure you all want to know. Right, especially for music, and then in, to, to come a, a work in a hospital, okay, as a clinical site. Um, yeah, which I'll be sharing with you. Okay, um, then to, uh, right now, um, doing some teaching in the universities. I went back to SUSS as a associate professor, and then also looking after the MBA programs over at the Advent Adventist School of Management. I'm also consulting for uh, WSG. Okay, doing uh, uh, many public workshops for our career transitioners. Okay, and then also sharing my expertise on the global platform on the future of work. Uh, I also lead a global team in the area of employee well uh, well being. Okay, so as an organizational psychologist, so these are my my Asia Pac team from New Zealand. And I look after uh, these uh, countries. So these are my country managers who report to me. Uh, some of our clients, these are, and among others, but these are a few. Okay, so they're big MNCs. I look after uh, banking finance, oil and gas, biopharma, ICT companies, technologies. Okay, so being in the foot, in the co uh, corporate setting, I get to know uh, firsthand, you know, what, what are these uh, in-demand skills, which is very needed, especially in post-pandemic Singapore. Or, or on the global uh, platform as well, okay. So do ask me questions, okay. As like I say, during this WSG public workshops, on the left was before COVID, so we can, uh, we had this at uh, National Library. I think some of you attended here. We had almost close to two hundred and fifty people, would you believe it? 
Okay, and then on the platform, when we went on to Zoom, we had, I had the uh, workshop of about 300 over people. So it's a lot. Okay, um, some things we should like to start off with, okay, to put in context. Uh, please download these uh, uh, very good articles. Because as, as a um, consultant researcher, okay, I need to read up on these sort of trends. Okay, and I, I, I like to recommend some of the very good ones. One of it is this by the World Economic Forum, a global study on the future of work, 2020. Now, usually for, for at a global level, they will study five-year trending. That means 2020 to 2025. So this is a very current and still very relevant uh, report okay, of, tell, of uh, telling you what are the skills and in-demand skills. Okay, You can find all this on Google. Next, another one. Uh, this is by PwC, PricewaterhouseCoopers, 21st uh, CEO survey. Take note of this. 91% say they need to strengthen soft skills al alongside with digital skills. Okay, so having digital skills is good, but the soft skills part, the, the CEOs are looking for this because it's it's very critical. Okay, To find uh, hard, hard skills is very easy, but to, to build soft skills is not easy. Okay, so in-demand skills, uh, one of the key things is uh, when you go for interviews and all that, people look for your soft skills first, especially your first interview. All right. Uh, let's show you some of the in-demand skills. Okay, technical hard skills and people and soft skills. Let's bring it all up. There we are. So your technical and hard skills would be like uh, machine learning, cloud computing, dev uh, ops, uh, data analytics systems and network, programming coding, risk management, Salesforce, all these things. Okay. The other one, people soft skills, critical thinking, problem solving, innovation, creativity, adaptability and agility, influencing communicator. So these are some of the in-demand skills uh, ranging from, from 2022 all the way to 2025. So I put together some of the skills that has been mentioned in the reports. Right. Uh, do, just chip in if you have any question. Huh? Okay. Now, this in-demand skills okay, came from this research called 21CC, okay? 21 Critical Core Skills. Okay, you can actually go and Google 21, uh, 21st Century uh, Core Skills or what we call 21CC. These are also taught at our Singapore schools as well. Okay, it's called the 21CC framework, where the students after, uh, after 10 to 12 years must have all these skills, in, which are in the boxes here, okay, to be able to be employable, because these are the things which uh, they are needed uh, in every single profession, in every single industry. Okay, you can find this at Skills Futures uh, uh, website. Okay, things like uh, thinking critically. Okay, and what do you mean by this? Oh, uh, the five boxes there: creative thinking, decision making, um, interacting with others. Very important things like diversity and equity. Are you able to work together with a very diverse, culturally diverse team? Okay, especially in Singapore, being a global uh, city yeah, of a lot of different nationalities working here. Okay, and the other thing is your skills uh, staying relevant. Right. Now, one of the key things here when we talk about in-demand skills, okay, we don't a lot, we don't use this word competency so much any, these days. Okay, we use the word uh, skills, not so much competencies. We don't really use the word abilities as well. It's more about skill sets because the skills are transferable. Okay. Let's move. Okay, uh, some of the resources, these are the parts I would like you all to go and download. Uh, this is the first one. Okay, the next one, this is newly published by uh, WSG, the skills demand for the future economy. I believe this came out, I think, was it November last year? Okay, it was launched. Okay, you can find all this also on Google. All right. Uh, this, this is a part here I'd like to applaud uh, WSG for putting this whole thing together. Okay, for all the different uh, roles in Singapore, especially in the Singapore workforce. Uh, it's a lot of roles, okay? And to put this whole thing together is really no joke. And um, do download this. This is very current. There, can you see the first edition, 2021? I think was it November it came out? Okay, good resource. Huh? Next one. 
this is, is especially for many of you who are in, uh, uh, in the hard skills data science. If you want to know uh, what level you are, this is a very good resource. Of course, no less, IBM. Okay, do download this. Next. Okay, in my workshops, I like to use this as a, a ref point of reference. Um, I, I, uh, this is actually complementary from the UK. UK Civil Service Commission, okay, where they, they list out all the skills. I'll be using this today to show you something about this thing. It's a very good resource which everyone uh, today should have. Okay, you can download this. Don't worry, uh, that's 2012, 2017 is already updated already. Okay, um, for for anyone who wants to know what's in demand skills, having a, a skills competency framework is very important because you need to know what level skills you are. True? Okay, so if you say you're a factory communicator, fair enough, but what level are you? And this kind of framework will tell you. So it's a very good directory, right? What do we have? Okay, this is also a whole data skills framework. You can actually find it on um, right on the bottom left, uh, tod.org oblique tools. Okay, this is where I got it from. Do take a snapshot of this and you can slowly find, uh, go and find it. Next, we also have this one. Ah, yes, okay. Um, I took this, I, I, I think this was from LinkedIn. <clears throat> some perspective, some context here. Okay, digital transformation, we are moving into that area. Um, there's going to be this, what we call, they call it the great vaccination. Okay, career switches across roles, domain and industry. People are, trying, uh, you know, uh, shifting from industries to different industries. They are not staying within the same industry. They are moving on. Okay, so you can find this there. They also quoted uh, the the WEF uh, of a report, which I showed you earlier, the 2020 report. Okay, uh, Gartner, 58% of the workforce need new skills to get their jobs done. Interesting, uh, this thing came out. Degrees just don't cut it anymore. I think this was quoted by a CEO. All right. Um, degrees alone is not enough. It's about the skills okay, that you have. So we look at, the, if you look right at the bottom, okay, she shares, you don't need a college degree to have a very good job at IBM. She's the CEO of IBM. Okay. In fact, 50% of his US jobs are open to anyone with the right skills or a willingness to learn them. She goes on to share how the skills over degrees approach to hiring was a response to a global shortage of skilled tech workers. With realities, opportunities and challenges set ahead of us, let's dive into some of the most in-demand skills for 2022. So in essence, what, what the world is now looking for, yes, you may have a master's degree, you may have an MBA, but they're looking more for your skill sets. What skills? So, you know, in your CV, please see that your, your skills are really up front, up center in, in your executive profile. Yeah. Okay, so some of the art skills here, in demand, tech skills. We talk about artificial intelligence. We talk about data science. We talk about coding, digital transformation, sales and digital marketing. So these are the, the, the five uh, in-demand skills which uh, consultants, the big four, uh, when we go and uh, consult, we always tell them that these are the five skills which are actually, for technical areas, these are the five skills which are, uh, uh, people are looking for. Now, among many things, okay, uh, these are the main five. Of course, you, you, have, a, you have a blockchain, you have a Eve, a FinTech, Okay, you have cybersecurity. All these are good, but the, the, the industry out there is looking for main, mainly these five. Okay. Now, to find these uh, uh, skills, uh, of people, skills, people with this sort of skills, it, honestly, it's very easy to find. Yeah, it's very easy to find. The thing which is very difficult to find are soft skills. Because soft skills are not easy to be taught. It's either you have it or you don't. It's not, not easy. All right, these kind of things like hard skills, all these can be learned. All right. But soft skills is not easy. All right. So I'm going to uh, give a definition of all these, uh, a taxonomy. Okay, you can take a photo, I won't read through the whole thing. So we talk about artificial intelligence and mach uh, machine learning. This is what it is. You can take a snapshot of this. Uh, we talk about data science. 
I'd like to spend a bit of time about data science, okay? Um, when we talk about data science, it's not just data science itself, like learning how to do data analytics. It's very important to, that you are able to tell story out of that data, okay? Churning out data is very good, but if data is not translated into a story at, in, in the context of business, what does it mean, okay? Then data is dead. Okay, so data is supposed to point to three things uh, to a come to a business. Number one, do I the data is supposed to inform me whether I should improve on my business? Should I uh, uh, what we call uh, uh, should I improve my business? Should I build new build new products, build new uh, uh, enhancement, or the last one throw away? That means there is no more supply demand anymore. So data is the point to three things, improve, build new, throw away. Right. So you have to tell the story. So designers to sales and marketing teams need data to tell the story in order that the senior management can make vital uh, business decisions. There we are. Okay. So doing data is easy, but telling the story needs skill in the context of that kind of business. Yeah. Uh, we talk about coding, very popular these days. Okay, building the algorithms behind systems. Okay, uh, you may, you may need skills. Uh, certain programs like uh, SQL, Java, Python, Ruby, some of some of many other programs out there. Okay, um, coding is actually in demand these days. That means writing the the algorithms behind it. Digital transformation very common these days. Okay. Um, today, if companies do not go into this form of digitalization, they seem to be falling back okay, in terms of technology because technology is always constantly evolving. All right? And a digital platform, okay, working on this digital space is something which everybody should be going into already. Okay. Of course, you know, there's cost benefit which you need to consider right? to, build a, to build a whole digital uh, platform for a company. All right. So be doing the doing able to do digital transformation is good, okay. But what the company businesses would like to know is what is the cost benefit, okay, for me to build a whole platform of uh, uh, digitalization in my company. All right. I know I got to go digital, but what will it cost me? This is where you need to have that part two, okay, in your engagement and conversation. Sales and digital marketing. Okay, very uh, upfront now these days because of COVID-19, people can't uh, uh, shop, so they do it online. It's, good. It's, it's a very big thing these days, okay, last mile. So sales and digital marketing is it's, uh, it's going to be very big, it's going to be very e-shopping and stuff like that. Okay, so these are the definitions. We talk about now the soft skills, analytical thinking and innovation, complex problem solving, critical thinking and analysis. Uh, active learning and learning strategies, that means the learning agility of the person, creativity, originality and initiative, attention to details, trustworthiness, emotional intelligence, reasoning, problem solving and ideation, leadership and social influence, coordination and time management. Um, I was speaking to a, co a coachee of mine, a client of mine which I was coaching. Uh, as much as you learned um, a certain new skill, okay, you have the knowledge but you're lacking on the skill portion, meaning you may know you may know digitalization, for example. All right. But the company wants you to be able to anticipate. Okay, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So can are you able to anticipate? So it is not just knowing the knowledge, but you must also know how to anticipate what sort of problems can surface in the event of and what kind of solutions can you provide. Okay, and this is what we mean by uh, complex problem solving, okay, and ideation. That means the innovation part. Right. So having knowledge alone is not good enough. You must learn how to anticipate. Right. So if this are, these are the in-demand soft skills, among many other things. If you notice, uh, there, when you look at all these uh, uh, items here, n there's nothing here which is effective communication. If it's effective communication, anything related, it will be under leadership and social influence. Okay. So 
So very good, uh, very good uh, idea. You know, if you are in your CVs and all that, when you have this word effective communication, perhaps maybe you can be more uh, prescriptive. Okay, to say like, you know, what what part of effective communication, like social influence, for example. Okay, that would be very helpful. Now, when we do skills, okay, think of this uh, what we call T zone. T zone. Now, what's T zone here? When we look at the top here, we have what we call in demand technical skills and in demand soft skills right at the top, okay, the horizontal bar. Now, when we talk about technical and in demand skills, we need to go down a little bit further, which is the vertical line of the T. We need to know about this. What is your current level of your skill? So we have the in-demand skills, which are good, but now what level are you? Because everyone's uh, level is very different. Okay, be it technical, be it soft skills. So I'm going to give you an example. Wait, sorry, yeah, I'm going to give you an example. This is taken from the uh, WSG workforce, okay? Um, for example, they are measuring like staying relevant. The skill is called digital fluency. And the descriptor here is leverage digital technology tools, systems, and software across work processes and activities to solve problems, drive efficiency, and facilitate information sharing. So you see the skills are divided into basic, intermediate, advanced. So when we talk about in-demand skills, fair enough. What level are you? Are you a basic level? Are you an intermediate level? Or are you an advanced level? Now, where can, yeah, are there any kind of directory where we can find these kind of different levels? Remember my earlier resources, okay, like data, data uh, science uh, competencies, all these kind of competency frameworks, you will find the different levels. And it's very good for you to look at this and, and measure up, like, wh which level are you? Okay. So they're giving you something very generic, basic, intermediate, advanced. Some competency are very specific even to level one, two, three, four, five or six for, for that matter, okay? So to identify your, 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 your level of your skill, your in-demand skill. So like data science, right? That I was just mentioning about it. Okay. Uh, you can find, uh, for, for, you can find uh, those different levels of data science, uh, level of uh, competencies and the, the deep skills in this document, right? Now, just now, the early uh, uh, what data said that the CEOs are saying that 91% are looking for people with soft skills aside with the uh, digital hard skills, right? Okay, so where can we find a document to somehow help us to know where is our soft skills? So I remember I was referring you to the UK, the UK uh, Civil Service Skills Framework. Don't bother whether it's, it's a civil service or not because uh, skills frameworks are skills frameworks. Right. So I'm going to give you an insight into that document. Okay. So in that document, it, they measure 10 different types of soft skills. Uh, they divide it into uh, setting direction, delivering results, engaging people. So these are the soft skills. And within these three uh, 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 departments, they, they, they break it down even further. Okay, they unpack it even further down. So like setting directions would be seeing the big picture, changing and improving, making effective decisions. All right. Then under delivering results, you have achieving commercial outcomes, delivering value for money, managing a quality service, delivering at pace. When it comes to engaging people, you have leading and communicating, collaborating and partnering, building uh, capability for all. So there are actually 10 uh, what we call uh, uh, skills. So all these are actually in-demand skills. So if you have, say, one of, one of these uh, 10 here, okay, I'm going to show you whether I have it. Next slide. Yes. Okay, so this is the document. Oh, sorry, sorry. Wait, no, let me see if I can. Yes. Let me, okay, I got the document here. I'm going to show it to you. Can you see the document? Can you unmute yourself? Can you all see the document? Yes? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to show yes. you what it looks like. This is a brilliant uh, uh, what kind of, uh, resource you must have, okay? So 
remember they were measuring these uh, uh, competencies so, uh, seeing the big picture changing and improving all right now then the question is but i don't understand what is the definition of seeing the big picture don't worry the thing has defined it for you so when you see seeing the picture that's the definition Don't be caught uh, with the word civil service. It doesn't matter. You can actually put uh, business, all right, or activity which will meet the businesses go the business goals and deliver. Don't worry about the words the civil service. Okay, like I said, soft skills are soft skills. All right. So when you look at when you look at any of these uh, definitions here, all right, and you are not sure what like for example, what do you mean by delivering at pace? Can you see delivering at pace? Okay. So Look for the delivery at pace. There. So it defines you what is delivery at pace. So if you think you have done this, okay, like what it, it has defined, then now the question is to identify what level you are. Okay. All right. So let's let's have something proactive here. We go back here. Maybe one of you, you like to choose one of this and I'll show you. One of the 10 here. I mute yourself and choose just choose one. Somebody? Make effective decision. Make if where is it now? Okay, making effective decision. Okay, so what is making effective decision? Let's go to the red color. Making uh then, okay. So looking at this definition, ask yourself whether you have done this before. Okay, obviously making effectively we all have right it's just what context now then the level is what kind of le uh, level are you in this effective decision making let's let's go further into the the document take note uh, making effective effective decision uh dr fong yes i'm not sure whether is it intentional but on the screen right there are um you know like black uh spots you know i mean not spots exactly but something a line is it uh, no, it is a block, like a rectangular or a... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I understand oh. why. Wait, uh. Let me okay. see if I can change it. Uh. I, I know why. You know why. Wait, uh. What about now? Is it better now? It's still there. It's still there. Is it on the top or the bottom? It's now on the right-hand side bottom and also in the middle right at the bottom. Okay. Yeah, wait now. Nah, I know. I know what's wrong. Now okay, still now there, is right? Uh, right bottom, still there. Right bottom. Okay, yeah, it's wait, a nah. large block, rectangular. Yeah, block. yeah. I think I know why. But the question is, how do I bring it up? Let me see if I can remove it now. Nah. Okay, just a minute. Let me share. Let me try. Hmm. See if I can do something here. Just a while. Huh? Because actually I'm going to uh, Google. Let me see if I can bring up my hard copy. Just a minute. Minute. Huh? So if you all have it, do download the thing first. You want to bring up mine? UK. Okay, there we are. Okay, let me see if I the thing is still there. Okay. You let me bring it. Can you see it? Is it better? Is it better? I think it's a little bit better now. Okay, great. But it's still there, but it's okay. It's okay, yeah? Okay, let me see if I could open this up bigger. Okay, um, so just now someone said making effective decision. So the definition of making effective decision is here. Uh, this is one thing which um, uh, people are looking at. It's, it's an in-demand skill, huh? all right, because you have to make, even though you are an individual contributor, all right, in what situation do you make decisions, let alone being effective, okay? And how effective is your effective? Okay, let's let's look at the document here. Making effective decision. Let's go down. 
seeing the big picture, seeing the big picture, changing and improving. No, nope. we are looking for making that area. Can you see what page is this? Page 13. Okay, so making effective decision, you have level six, you have level five, level four, level three, level two, level one. Those on the left side in the box are those which are good. Those on the right side means ineffective behaviors. So you should not be looking on the right, you should be looking on the left. Now, let's say if you are, you have identified that you're level three, okay? Look at the level below that you have, you are able to demonstrate all these things in the level two. So if you say you are level three, but that means you have already come up the ranks uh, from level two. See that you have actually met all the level two. Okay, now, and then you look at level four. Are you able to do any one of the level four? If you can, edit. So one of the key things here is do not copy and paste, learn to rephrase it. Okay, if you say you have done effective communication, all right, say, okay, yes, I actually draw together and present reasonable conclusion from a wide range of incomplete. Okay, if you say you have picked this, try to rephrase this. Okay, now effective decision making, they have a whole repertoire here of one, two, three, four, five, six. Choose only three of the top, of the top, uh, of the six, uh, choose the top three. Okay, so instead of using like ensure all uh, government and public, maybe you can say private and public. All right, no need to use the word government. You can use the word uh, public and private data and information is treated with care in accordance with security. Okay, so this is what I mean by how do I know uh, my what is the definition of my in-demand skills and my level? This is a very doc good document. Okay. So please have look uh, download this. It's, I I can tell you it's it's a it, it's a it's a real blessing to even have this 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 document really. Okay. Uh, questions? Anyone? Questions? Over to you all. Marissa. Yes, I actually have a question. Um, who does actually identify which level you are? Do, do you do it yourself? Does your boss do it? Does HR do it? Does like a third party provider from like outside, like a consultant do it? So what is generally the common approach to this? Very good. That's a very good question, Marisa. In fact, nowadays uh, in each company, each company must build their own competency skills framework. Okay, so you have, let's say for uh, now, a HR can only build an empty shell because an, a HR is not an engineer. Right, so she can build an empty shell, but is the department head who's the who maybe the head of engineering would need to I uh, articulate the different level of the skills. Okay, like level one, level two, level three, level four, level five. Okay, now building a skill competency framework is not just articulating the skills. All right, there are actually five other C's which a person needs to consider. You want to write this down, huh? First is uh, the the competency framework. Okay, building the competency, like articulating the skills, right? Now, if you're able to articulate the different level of skills, okay, you need to do the next C, which is called commensuration of salary. True? Okay, I'm not going to be a level three and I'm still earning level one salary. You need, you need to commensurate with my skills, don't you think so? Right? So, the first one is competency framework. The second one is the commensuration, the salary for each skill. The third one is called courses. That means if I'm if I don't meet, do I need to go for will I need to go for courses or the company will send me for the course? Okay. Then the fourth one would be more career uh, engagement. Now because of the whole skill framework, okay, you can have a career conversation with me. Meaning like okay, where do you see yourself growing in my company, right? So you have to show me the skills framework. So when I look at the skills framework, I said, oh, okay, so at the level five, you're, you are expecting this sort of skill, okay? Uh, at this current moment, I think I'm only at level three, okay? But if you can send me for courses, now that I can see what is a level five, okay, perhaps maybe I will go for, I will take some courses or maybe the company wants to send me for some training. 
Okay. Now, then you have what we call the exceptional talents. Okay, when they look at the whole skills framework, they can they they can do every single level. Okay, they are what we call the exceptional talents. Then you are what we call uh, capacity load them another twenty percent. It means giving giving them more more than what's been articulated because they are very exceptional talent. They can do they are really very good. Okay, so the five C's. I'm going to repeat it. You build the competency framework. With it, you must commensurate with the salary. Okay, so with the skill framework, now you send me for the, the relevant courses, which I don't meet, okay, for that skill. Then um, you now you can have a career conversation with me. Where where do you where can I see myself growing in this company, right? Given the skills which are, which is expected of me, then um, I'm ex I'm an exceptional talent. I, whatever you show me, I can do all. Okay, so then you have to load me another twenty percent higher. Okay, because what's articulated is very easy for me. And okay, since it's easy, I'll have to give you another twenty percent more, uh, more comprehensive than what what's written. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, any other question? Any other questions? No. Do you think that was a very good resource? Sorry, Mr. Fong. Mm. Yes. You said five C, right? The mm. last one is what are the C? Capacity loading. Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay, wait, I'm, I'll, I'll type it here in the group chat. Nah. So you have a competency uh, framework. Next, then you have the commensuration of salary. Right? And then you have... Uh, courses and training then you can have career development conversation and then what we call capacity loading then up 20 percent one two three four five can you all see in the group chat so Dr. Fong, sorry, yes. just to circle back. So who in the end will judge this? Will this be like different um, different parts of then an organization or is it mm, main, mm. more common that you have like an outside consultant to judge it very objectively? Is this very mainly good. like done in-house? Is it um, done mm. with the department head together with HR or is mm. it a third party? That's what I was wondering, what the common, since you have worked with so many organizations yeah. before. Um, they use the competency framework to promote you. Because in order to promote you, right, you must have the skill. True? So, of course, okay. So, what? You, for example, I'm going to give you an example. You know when you apply for jobs, they have the role and responsibility? They say they, you're supposed to have this, this, this. But they never tell you what level. They say you're supposed to be leadership. Yes, I know leadership. But what, what level of leadership are you looking for? You see? So, so usually they don't put the level. All right. So you have to make a rough gauge like when you're applying for the job, is that level, I mean that, that position, a senior management, a junior management. So if you use that article, if it's a senior management level, look at level five and six. Okay. If it's a middle management, look at level three and four. All right. If it's executive, look at level one and two. Okay, so first you would self-assess yourself to see you where you are and then mm. see if mm. it like fits the organization. Mm. Okay, mm. yeah. Okay, then from there, you 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 take that, that whole paragraph and rephrase it. Rephrase it. Now, don't only use the UK one. Uh, there are a few, uh, even like the, the WSQ, WSG, I mean, they have their own skills framework. Look at their, theirs as well and do a comparison. Okay. Um, there's also another one. Uh, there is a lot. No, there's a lot of competency frameworks. Okay, so I've given you a UK one. You have now. You have the Singapore one. Okay, look for an American company. So at least we have three. So when we talk about effective communication, you look across all the three. Are they the same? Do they say the same thing? Then you can plug, plug and paste. You have a variety of all three. Okay. You see, interestingly, you know, when you go for interviews, people uh, will ask you, okay, I noticed that in your CV, you say you're an effective communicator. 
Can you give an example, right? So they're trying to assess your level. So when they ask you, for example, they're trying to assess your level, what level are you? So even like problem solving, right? What type of level of problem solving do you have? Okay, so remember, if it's going to be a senior role you're applying for, look at that resource, see that you have a level five and six. Huh? Anyway, they're level one, two, three, four, five, six. So you break down one, two, three, four, five, six. Five, six are the senior level. Uh, three, four is the mid, mid, middle management. One and two is the executive. Easier? Easy that way? Brilliant, right? Uh, Sarah is asking, wondering if we are doing a capacity loading on the exceptional talents. Do we necessarily then pay them as per their increased scope of work? The salary would also be potentially higher than someone with the same role. As same. Yes. Um, so it depends on how much the company will pay for an exceptional talent. That means what's the ceiling? Because for each level, you must have the, the base scale, the salary scale, you see, for each level. Okay, so you have somebody who's exceptional talent. Uh, what can he earn? What can he earn? I mean, is I always tell the, the HR, thank you for identifying me as a potential talent, but what is the salary scale? I want to know. Right? What kind of what kind of uh, what kind of benchmarking of salary are we looking at for exceptional talents? You see, sometimes uh, that's why people move from company to company. Yes, you may identify me as a talent, but the the salary compensate the commensuration salary right is not attractive. It's not attractive. You're demanding so much of the skill and then you pay so little. Makes sense, right? It's like mm, I might as well go somewhere else. Who will commensurate according to my level of my skills. Okay. That is why when we build competency frameworks like in demand skills like that, right? You have to work very closely with the uh, rewards manager. Okay, because the rewards manager will go and do homework on what is, for this level, what's market paying for that kind of level? For this sort of skills as well, how much is market paying? Because we all can, we can actually can go and download this sort of uh, salary uh, guidelines, right? Information is so wide nowadays, you can go and find anywhere. Glass door also you can find, right? Okay. So I think it's very important, um... Now, also in in-demand skills, you also have to consider not when we say commensuration, uh, it's only one partner, okay, or three in the total annual package, which I believe you are very familiar. You have to think of base salary. You also have to think of uh, your what your bonus, okay. You also got to think of allowance or maybe sometimes commission. Okay. So having in-demand skill is good, but what is the total annual package of that skill? You may, you may require me to have that skill, but yeah, but what, what are you paying? Okay, all right. So be, be wise, be wise, okay? Yes, we all want in, we, we, we'll meet the in-demand skills, but how much will you pay for those sort of in-demand skills? Right? Exactly what Sarah is saying. If I'm a level, if I'm a level six, tell me, tell me how much you pay for level six. Okay. All right, uh, let's move. Could you please talk about? Uh, could you please talk a bit about your transition from academia to industry? I have a PhD in philosophy and I'm looking for a role in communications consulting, but finding it hard to explain my transferable skills. Okay, um, okay. Uh, I started off as a music uh, leader, director of an orchestra. Okay, of course I don't bring my musical notes into. Remember, my my next transition was being a clinical psychologist. Okay. Now I already have I have a two PhD. My first PhD is in music. All right. Now when I went into clinical side, the the PhD in music has got no relevance to clinical side, right? Okay. So I had to think of five things that is relevant to move into clinical side, and I noticed that the the, the first thing was of course soft skills. Because I I, I have to lead a hundred and twenty member orchestra. Okay, and it's leadership skills. I have to be very strong in my communication, my problem solving, because I'm handling humans, right? When I became a clinical psychologist, I'm also dealing with humans. So human was a common denominator across all my transitions, okay? So on the horizontal, uh, it's people business. Now, then, all, then coming down to the, the, the tactical, okay? Yeah, so like what things? 
okay, that will be relevant over to clinical psychology. Okay. Now, interesting in clinical psychology, all right, uh, it's a lot about, it's, it, it, psychology is applied science, okay, but music is higher than science. Because why? When you read musical notes, behind a musical note are numbers. Okay? Or what we call taoge, you know music the music notes. Behind those music those those tau, the musical notes are actually numbers. We got it's called precision. That's why to me music is precision engineering. A wrong note is a wrong note. Okay? You cannot go into a concert and, and have so many mistakes. Right? So we are performing and it has to be at perfection. Engineering perfection already. Okay, so um, and uh, what you call that? So I, I I didn't know that you know I actually have a little bit of uh, what you call it, analytical skills in terms of science. It's like data points. Musical notes are like data points. And in applied science and psychology, we are very applied science. We have to do statistics because why we do a percentage assessments. Can you see the transferable skills? Interesting, isn't it? Right. So usually it will be the it will be, usually the first thing will be the soft skills. So you think of five soft skills and five hard skills that you where you were that you can bring across. Anything you can bring across is called in demand skills already. Okay, because those skills are enduring and enduring. It can last for a very long time. Okay. Right now, let's finish up what I have. Uh, okay, so while I'm changing my notes, have any other questions? Anyone? No? Yeah, I'm finishing up my notes already. Amazing, right? So much to pick up. Okay, so uh, I've actually put this into like uh, a level. So now you know where I took those levels from. It was from that from that uh, document. Okay. And at that time, when I made a transit, I don't even have such a document to, to rely on or to refer to. Can you imagine? Okay. So, uh, yes, all right. Ah, um, basically, when you talk about transfer skills, there are cognitive skills, social skills, emotional skills. One of the main things that is problem solving. Problem solving in processes and problem solving in people. How do you solve people problems and how do you solve uh, process problems? Okay, your cognitive skills, that means your, your critical thinking, your strategic thinking, your analytical thinking, your social skills, all right, your diversity skills, communication, uh, influencing negotiation, for example, and emotional skills, the emo emotional regulation, how do you cope with, you know, stress and demands and, you know, uh, pressure. So these are actually what we call the transfer skills. Uh, this is a, also a, a very good uh, document. If you notice, I always take from the World Economic Forum because it is already the, the echelon already. Okay, all right. Building a common language for skills at uh, the work, global taxonomy. The minute you see the word taxonomy, that means there's going to be a grid. Okay. Oh, is that all? Oh, so far it's finished. Okay. Uh, questions, anyone? Questions? Anybody has any questions? Okay, let me show you one which I built for a company. Okay, a competency framework. I went into com this company to to specially bespoke to build for them. Okay, because they said that the those uh, document you shared with us, Dr. Fong, is a bit too generic. Could you customize to our company's business? I said sure. Okay, so I'm going to show you something I built for them. You can take a snapshot of this. Uh, let me see if I have it. I believe I do. It's here. Mm, just a minute. Huh? Toolkit, competency framework. Talent, where's my word? Talent, talent there. Competency, talent. You know? what do you work? competency framework, yeah, there. Yes, correct. Okay. Okay, this this is a uh, uh, I'm going to share with you some of my secrets here. Okay, please uh, take a photo. I can't give this over. To, I can't give this to you. Now, basically, in a company, 
all right, there are actually what we call six pillars. Six pillars, okay, where in-demand skills are being uh, uh, demonstrated in, in within one of these six pillars or all six. The six pillars are what we call uh, purpose, that means the business objective, partners, the business partners, okay, internal, external, uh, and usually external stakeholders or investors. Then we have the profits, the return on investment of the company, the products of the company, the services, processes and the people. So when you say in-demand skills like hard skills and soft skills, where is it being demonstrated or where is it applied? Which P do you apply that hard skills and soft skills? Okay, so um, I, de I was defining this for this, for, this, for this company. Okay, so when I go into a company for consultancy, I need the company to, de to articulate and define for me each of these P's dimension. Because every company's these P's are very different because it's based on their culture and their business. Okay, all right. So, uh, so this is all articulated by the company, yeah? Right. So once I have this whole matrix of this whole company, this becomes the company's culture, the company's heartbeat, the DNA of the company really. I will understand the company. That's why we call it it's a blueprint. Then now we can do the measurements. Okay. So in order for the company who wants to do these things, you need to have a people. You, you, know, you need to have the people and you need to have the people, the skills to do, to drive these, all these expectations, isn't it? Okay. So... So I have this what we call a success profile. So we will look at the person's experience, strength, ability, technical, and behavior. All right. So in demand skills represents experience, strength, ability, technical, behavior. All right. And these are, this is the definition, the explanation of it. Or you can take a snapshot. I won't go through this. Okay. So from here, I'll now I will build. Can you see the, the six piece appear again? So I will build for two types of people or two types of role. One is called the leadership role. And one is called the manager role. Okay, so we will measure them based on the band level or grade level one, two, three, four, five. Like just now that document. Okay, so your manager one or manager two, three, four, five. What is your grade? Then we we measure ah, the functional operations management strategic. Then we measure hygiene factors. Okay, then now we articulate the skills. This is the skills. Remember, this is for leadership and managers. Okay, now if this company has, now this company is actually a manufacturing company that has got engineers, technical people. So this, this whole grid would not be relevant to the engineers and technical people because they don't do sales. They don't, they don't manage people. They're more, the individual contributors. So what does an individual contributor's uh, uh, competency framework look like? Okay, it looks like that. For individual competency, like engineers and technical people, there are only three levels only. They are called specialists, subject matter expert, domain experts. Uh, accountants also will be will be here as well. Okay. So remember, you, you notice the six feet doesn't change, huh? Because these are always the pillars of the company. But the skills to drive this will be different for an individual contributor. There. There we are. So as a consultant, we go into a company to help a company to build this. Because if you don't build this, then how do we, how do we measure people's uh, skills? And then you cannot measure, you cannot commensurate their salary. Okay. So it, as you look, individual contributor skills are very different from just now that management. Okay. So at the domain expert, you should be considered like a consultant, an, individual, uh, an industry domain expert, advising and consulting already. Okay. So when this whole two things, the whole two skills framework has already been uh, uh, painstakingly designed, now we can talk about this thing here. Remember I was talking about the, the five Cs? There, uh, there we are. Competency framework, commensuration package, courses learning, development, capacity loading. This is the five Cs. Interesting. So today, a HR needs to build this thing. Even if you're a HR BP, okay, what level, you identify the, the talent, but what, what kind of level of the skill does this person have? Because if not, you cannot commensurate. He's not able to do the job because he doesn't have the skills. Okay, do I have anything else from here? To track technical leadership, okay, yeah, that one's given already. Yeah, specialist track, okay, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, questions? Anyone? So today when we talk about in-demand skills, okay, the in-demand skills must be put into practice into the six Ps. All right? But as you, as, as you notice, as it goes higher and higher, you need a, a higher level of that in-demand skills. But where do we identify the in-demand skills, that level? Those, are the, those, doc, those documents which I sent you earlier, this is where you look for. Unless the company has built its own. Like for this company, it, it, it builds its own level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. For many of you who are wondering what is those RO, return on investment, return on value, Okay, return on acquisition and return on equity. ROP rep, uh, return on purpose. So it, someone's asking, if you do not naturally have a conscientious personality, how do you build it as far as the workplace is concerned? Uh, you may need to explain to me what you mean by conscientious personality, Rafi. How do you define conscientious personality? What, what is that? Oh, the different returns. Okay. Um, let's take the first ROI, return on investment. ROA, return on acquisition. ROV, return on value. ROP, return on purpose. ROE, return on equity. Uh, Melissa is asking, how do employers work out career transition allowance package from healthcare to financial industries? What are the common skills that they are looking for? Yeah, so it depends on what kind of skills is needed. Okay, you, you can come from a different industry. It doesn't, it doesn't bother them. The question is, do you have the relevant skills or not? They're looking for the relevant skills. They don't bother whether you're coming from what sector to what sector. They look for your skills first. If you can convince them that you have the skills, you will get the first interview and that's where you have to sell yourself. Because they'll be very interested to find like how do you transit? You get me not? Already there's already a different industry. Okay. Then um then whatever what skills how re related and how relevant are those skills that is, is able to transfer to their industry they want to know. Conscientious personality. When you say conscientious, is it what hardworking or oh, being meticulous, detail oriented, fine tuned? Um, okay, okay. before I can answer you, Rafi, you have to tell me whether the role is a leadership role, management role, or individual contributor. Okay, because each of these three roles, each of these three roles define different type of mindset. All right, when you are an individual contributor, I don't expect you to be a strategic person. But I expect you to be a, a person who is very detailed conscious. You're able to measure, use data to, to, uh, to substantiate. Okay? You must do uh, big and deep data. Okay? Problem solving of processes. I, as an individual contributor, I'm not expecting you to manage people. Okay? People who are individual contributors are not, have got very weak soft skills because the nature of your job. All right. That's why for engineers and for for uh, technical people, if you're a management role, okay, you're, you're an en uh, engineer manager, then I want, to, I want to believe that your JD, you are actually managing engineers. That means you talk the same language. Okay. Now, question is, at, at your level as a manager, okay, apart from managing the engineers, what other management in demand soft skills are they looking for? Because your, the soft skills part there may be a problem for you in your management role. Okay? As an engineer, I do not doubt your, your hard skills. But when it comes to the soft skill, there is no sign of getting to up the, the ladder and there is no soft skills. No such thing. There's no such thing. I'm going to show you something which I built yesterday, which I'm going to present to the government tomorrow. Okay, you can take a picture of this. There is today those people who are individual contributors. What is expected of you is called digital leadership. Okay, let me share with you. Uh, where is it? I just built this yesterday. Uh, did you, do, do I have it here? Let me see. Uh. Uh, it took me the whole night to build this. Okay, there, I did it. 
All right. Okay, let me share this with you. Uh, just built this yesterday. Um, so we are asking the individual contributors need to have need to look after human beings, okay, in their team. Yes, they do. Say so. Let me show it to you. Can you all see the strategic operation model? This is actually for people in hard skills. You are not sharing your screen. I'm not sharing. Wait, no. Cannot be. Am I sharing now? Yes. Okay. Look at the look at the framework for people who are individual contributors. Look at the word digital leadership. You still got to look after people and processes. What about UX? What about your user experience? This is the this whole framework is not for people in um, uh, managers and leadership. It's for the technical leaders, the the leaders who are who are more the individual contributors. This is your framework. See how comprehensive this thing is? So one of the in-demand skills, which is very critical today, I can tell you it's going to be soft skills. To find digital skills, hard skills, very easy to find. I can I guarantee you it. But to, to find someone with that kind of soft skills and who's able to manage people, conflict management, influencing uh, potential business partners, that one, wow, not easy to find. It's like needle in a haystack. So very much what does the role demand? And and the person who is engaging people or influencing others, what kind of level is he in that in that conversation when he influenced? Yeah. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna stop here for a while to get some questions, to answer some questions. Come. Uh Dr. Fong. Yes, you need to speak louder, uh, a bit soft. Yeah, Dr. Fong, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I, I just want to check, right, because uh, you mentioned quite a few times that one of the in-demand skills is the soft skills. Mm. So let's say if a person do not uh, possess uh, soft skills like this, then mm. how can the person improve? Uh, and also the second question is, do you as a uh, practicing uh, psychologist, right, mm. do you believe that this is actually inherent in a person that means inborn yeah yeah okay so maybe can can just uh, highlight these two thank you okay um i like to use this word some things are caught and some things are taught eq for example emotional intelligence cannot be taught it is caught it's not easy to teach people how to go in, how to feel Okay, you cannot teach feelings. <laughs> you, you can fake it, you know, you can fake it, but it, but a person, a, a bona fide person will know that you're faking it. Okay, and the soft skill it will always come, I can tell you, during the first interviews. Because the first interview, which is chat, or one point where the HR is doing the interview, she is going to look for soft skills. Now, Why? Why, why is she looking for soft skills? Because the soft skills, the in-demand soft skills is, is aligned to the company's mission, vision, values, the culture of the company. And she's going to do very strict gatekeeping because if you don't have the soft skills, then she is not going to allow all this sort of harassment, which is very big thing these days in the company, you know, uh, uh, conflict management and all this because all this could have already been mitigated during the gatekeeping. The gatekeeping, the gatekeepers got to be very strict. If this person has got the skills to work but doesn't have the soft skill, they won't take the person. Yeah. Now, if the department head and the HR is in conflict, then they will bring this up to the CEO. The CEO has to decide, do you want business or you want culture? I was dealing with one company, there's a, a senior director who brings in 14 uh, million US a year. But his character sucks in the company. And the HR every day has to fight fire with him. Because why? He's very verbally abusive, okay, to, to across the whole organic matrix. Why? Because he, he considers himself the godson. He, he's the a business development. He brings in the 14 million. So he's putting on the table here, do you want the 14 million or you want culture? You decide. 
So this has to be a decision by the, the CEO, the chairman, don't you think so? So doesn't mean that you bring in money that allows you to be very, uh, very what you call that, um, uh, irrational, you know, and, and, and being a bully in the company or, or what we call toxic managers, right? So the company has to decide. The person bringing this money can be toxic. Now, which one do you want? So the gatekeeping is going to be very, very tight these days. So if the CEO, if the HR doesn't think that you know you fit doesn't fit into the culture, she's not going to take you. Even if you're very competent. I can tell you, there are people who can do the work. As Singaporeans, uh, foreigners who come to Singapore, all have can do the work because if not, you're not going to get EP into into Singapore. You have to really show that you are competent, right? But now. The thing which in the whole industry is lacking here is called soft skills. Soft skills. You see, we have a lot of people who do the work, but who is going to go out and influence the potential businesses, the business partners, the investors? Who is going to go there to talk? Who has the kind of bandwidth to be able to convince and influence those potential uh, investors to come in and invest in the company? You need someone to talk. Yeah, you need to find the right personality to do it. Right? So from a psychological standpoint, okay, certain certain emotions, certain uh, soft skills cannot be taught. It's impossible, very hard. I can teach you to fake it. I can teach, but you know something? But when the crunch comes, when when it comes, the pressure comes, uh, you may not be able to to what you call that, uh, um, demonstrate the, those soft skills effectively. Okay, when in when it's, it's a peace timer, uh, it's very easy for you to just fake it. But when it comes to a crunch, uh, you may not be able to resist because the resilience is needed. Your soft skills need to be there. Your what, one maybe one of the key soft skills which is not mentioned there, what we call political savviness. When you have to do with a very very difficult uh, potential uh, business partner. How do you be political savvy? How you, do you agree to disagree? But yet you want his business. And not come across as confrontational, for example. Are you still able to hold back? Regulate your mission. A very good example is something that happened 48 hours ago in America. I'm sure, I'm sure you all read the news, right? Will Smith. Remember Will Smith? He could not regulate his emotions. You see? He could not regulate his emotions. So when you are confronted with that, okay, are you still able to hold your rein, hold your horse, wait for the right time, then maybe confront? But some people cannot because they are reactive, you see? That's a, that's a very good example of what we call emotional uh, uh, regulating. Can you regulate or not? When the time of a pressure like that, it is in the workplace, what you 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 get this sort of things. So that 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 scenario is a very good example of regulating emotions. When you're faced with a tension, are you still able to hold your horse? Not easy. Some people cannot. Some people cannot. How do we quantify soft skills? Is it HR go no go judgment or are there metrics to benchmark? Um, it's not easy to, okay, when you say quantify soft skills, okay, Yanting, it depends on how the company defines soft skills. Okay, how do the manufacturing industry define soft skills? How do healthcare define soft skills? It is being defined by the context. That means each industry must define what soft skills. I can tell you for Singapore Airlines, aviation, Soft skill is 80% because of the nature of the job. 80%. Yeah. Okay. All right. One last question before we end. Anyone? One last question. Dr. Fong, how to improve soft improve. skill? <laughs> Even you... though, let's say, you're not born with it, you know, we, we have to improve, right? Coaching. 
coaching. Oh. Yeah, go for coaching. Let let the coach uh, ascertain your level of your skill, your soft skills, where they are. Level, le are you a level one, two, three, four, five? Yeah. Okay. And then if you apply for a certain job and the job requires you a level six and you're level four, let the coach be the one who help you to get from a level four to a six. How long it takes, it depends on the, the coach would know. Okay. All right. Uh, that's the end for this afternoon. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this uh, in demand uh, uh, skills workshop. I thought I hope there were a lot of uh, takeaways for you all.